Have you heard about the Great Resignation? And if you're a leader, does it really worry you? I understand if it does. Ideally, as an employer, as a supervisor, you want to keep a good team together. You want that band to stay together. They have the experience. They're able to make sweet music. It just makes sense. You might be a little nervous that a few people might be looking to leave your organization. You lose their knowledge, their experience, just them knowing how to do stuff. You don't want to see them go. Can you stop the great resignation? We're going to talk about that today and maybe how you might want to look at this challenge in a slightly different way. My name is Ken Okel. I'm a professional speaker. I talk to audiences about ways that you can improve your performance on the job. And I pull from a background that includes broadcast news, hurricane relief, and professional ballet. Now, I know, unusual combination. But I got to tell you, in each and every field, I had to work at a high level every day and perform under pressure. You may have heard about a recent survey that came out. It was from Bankrate. It found that 51% of the respondents said they were thinking, looking to maybe leave their job. That's a big number. Think about your employees. Take half of them away. That's a lot of goodbye parties. That should be a concern for any type of organization. People may be reevaluating things right now. They may feel like, you know what, after working from home for so long, I just don't want to deal with a commute. The good parts of the job aren't as good as they used to be. The bad stuff bugs me a lot. Let's see if I can find a better fit for my current work-life balance. I understand all that. What can you do as a leader to try to retain some of that talent? First thing, I think it's really important for your organization, your department, have a vision. Make sure that people have a good idea in terms of what you are doing. What are they a part of? What is the thing that you are working toward this quarter, this year? If people just think, oh, I go somewhere for 40, 50 hours a week, I don't really feel like I make a difference. Well, then there's less staying power in terms of the job. They can become more distracted by other things or annoyed by other things. Whereas if you feel like, hey, we've got some new initiatives that I think are important, We've got some goals that we're working toward. If these things work out, it could be great for the organization. There's a big difference there from just punching a clock to feeling you are a part of something. Often, upper management, they have all this stuff. They know it all. They don't necessarily communicate it down through the organization. It just gets skipped. But you might have a bit of a price if you stay silent when you're not sharing the big picture with people. Another thing I want to talk to you about is the perception of career advancement in a job. Do people feel like, hey, if I'm in this organization and I work really hard, am I going to be able to move up the ladder? Often I think positions really fall into three categories. Let's go through those three categories. The first one is your job is the job that you have and it's the job you're going to have forever. There is no opportunity to advance. You're stuck where you are. Hope you like it. Okay, that makes you feel a little nervous. In the second group, it's like you're good at your job. You may have a chance to move up to other positions as openings happen. You will be competing with outside candidates, but you might have a little bit of an edge since we already know who you are and what you do. Okay, that's very different from option one. And then there's option three. Option three really says... You don't have a chance to advance here. It's just not possible or the person who has that position where you would go into, they're not going anywhere. But it's a situation where if you work hard in your position, you succeed, you will get a reward. You will be able to get a significantly better job somewhere else. Think about where do most people in your organization fall? Category one, two, or three. That's a very important thing to understand. Because maybe you are a place that, yeah, it's it's a stepping stone job. If people know that, that can make a big difference. They're going to work harder. You may not have them for that long if it's just a kind of a dead-end career. And sometimes those can be very satisfying. You've reached a good place. You like where you are. But keep in mind, with the great resignation, being in that first category mm, might not be too good when it comes to retaining employees.
Let's talk about money. Some may say, hey, if you want to retain your employees, just pay them more. Makes sense. But I understand that for a lot of organizations, you really can't do that. Maybe you can give people some bonuses, but it's not necessarily something that you can sustain year after year. Or you may realize that we may increase people's pay. Inflation may be higher, so people aren't really gaining that much. Consider if there are non-monetary benefits that you can offer employees. Here's an example of one. Most of us have been working from home for much of the past year, year and a half. Perhaps there is a model where people would be able to do some working from home, maybe all the time, maybe just on certain days. You wanna make sure whatever model you go with that the work still gets done, people can communicate well, there aren't problems. Are there other benefits? Additional time off, casual days. Maybe you buy some better coffee for the break room. Think about what are things that employees might really like that don't necessarily cost you a lot of money. Maybe there are quarterly goals where the reward if you achieve the goal is you get out a little early before a holiday weekend. Just trying to brainstorm. As a leader, you don't have to think of all these things. I suggest putting together a committee of employees from different levels of the organization, have them brainstorm, see what they can come up with. Now, you don't have to follow all these things, but it is good to know where are people at, where are the things that they really value, and are you able to give them any of them, or maybe say, you know what, I now know you all have this goal, we can't achieve it right now, but hopefully down the road, we will. That at least gives people an idea of what might be ahead, might be worth sticking around for. This tip may seem a little obvious, but make sure that you are talking to your employees about their future. Find out what's the thing you like best about your job, what's the thing you'd like to do more of, and what is that thing that just kind of drives you crazy at the end of the day, you're just like, oh, I don't like that part of my job. Because maybe there's a way to take that Ugh, piece of the job and remove it. Maybe it's a function that doesn't need to be done anymore. Maybe it could be outsourced. Some automation might be able to take it over. And you might be able from the conversation to identify, oh, this person likes this thing. I didn't know that. Let's give them these additional responsibilities. Take some other stuff away. They'll be almost in a new position, but it's still kind of the same role. That doesn't happen unless you're communicating with people, finding out those questions. We've talked about a lot of strategies. Now I want you to think about what if those employees still want to go? You throw them a nice party, you wave them goodbye, you wish them good luck, you give them a nice LinkedIn recommendation. It's not necessarily the end of the world because sometimes you can have a really good employee, they do a good job, but when you hire their replacement, you use that as an opportunity to kind of adjust the position a little bit, where maybe they were really good at a certain skill that isn't necessarily the most desired skill anymore. Maybe the needs of the organization and the needs of the position have moved a little bit. So you wanna hire someone who does something a little different, still in that same job realm, but they may have a background in maybe computer software where the other person was different. Think about when you're replacing someone, you don't need to get a carbon copy. You may be able to get a new set of skills that strengthens the organization. Now, there was nothing wrong with the old employee and you probably would have liked to have kept him or her. But this may be an opportunity to upgrade the position to better meet needs. Think about if that's something that might be good in the big picture for your organization. Because sometimes when you wave goodbye to someone, you're waving hello to something new and a new opportunity. For leaders, there could be some challenging times in the next year or so when it comes to employee retention. However, you can prepare for it. For more about me, my name is Ken Okel. Go to my website, which happens to be like my name, kenokel.com. Well, there you can read some of my articles, listen to my podcast, and watch some clips from my speaking presentations. Want to send me an email? TV guy at kenokel.com. Now you may be wondering, hey, what's the deal with that email? Okay, when I worked in TV news, you'd go out in the public, maybe to the grocery store or a restaurant, 
And people would recognize you from the news and they would really want to say hi, but they wouldn't remember your name. So they would just do this thing where they yell out things like, hey, TV guy. If you want to connect with me on these social channels, they are also under my name, Ken Okel. If you send me a connection request on LinkedIn, could you do me a favor? Could you take the option where you can send a note and put in that note where we encountered one another? If it was at a speaking presentation or in a virtual talk like this, that way I kind of know where you're coming from. Sometimes on LinkedIn, you get approached by people who just want to send you endless sales messages. Those aren't necessarily so appealing to me. I hope you enjoyed these tips. Let me know if you have a favorite. And of course, if you have an additional one, let me know. We may include it in a future video. I'm Ken Okel. Take care.